Lack of transparency has been called out as a major driver of mistrust amongst consumers when it comes to environmental claims. And in response to this, my team and I are building a business focused on climate change mitigation that's all about greater transparency. And let me tell you, it's a vulnerable place to be in, being this open. So you might have heard that we need to halve our carbon emissions in the next eight years. And we need to reach net zero by 2050 if we're to have any chance of keeping global warming to one and a half degrees warming. And you might have also heard the consequence of us not achieving this goal. We're talking extreme weather, water scarcity, the collapse of critical ecosystems, and irreversible chain reactions as ice caps melt and forests are lost. We can't let that happen. So if the goal is a no-brainer, figuring out how to achieve it is not. If climate change was easy, we'd have solved it already. But the reality is, we don't yet have all of the low-carbon or sustainable solutions ready to deploy to replace all of the things that are problematic with how we produce, consume, and live our lives. And we don't appear to be open to fundamentally changing how we live to achieve this goal, at least not at the rate required. So the people in the best position to find solutions for tomorrow are precisely those responsible for most of our emissions today, people in industry. Unless the private sector is actively engaged and investing in these solutions, they're probably not going to be developed. And that doesn't mean that we should just sit back and leave them to it and let them carry on without any scrutiny. But I think our scrutiny should involve greater curiosity and less villainization. We need to take an interest in those decarbonisation initiatives that have made a difference and then make it easier for all businesses to adopt these practices. And that means being open to sharing what's working well, and importantly, what's still a work in progress or unsolved. If we're to succeed, decarbonisation will require curiosity, collaboration, and transparency. We need those taking a lead on sustainability to share the results of their efforts, both the good and the imperfect, so others can learn from their experience. And this brings me to a serious concern. Greenwashing accusations tend to focus their fire on those businesses that claim to be working towards decarbonisation. An independent study has revealed the results of these attack campaigns. The study examined 18 years of data across thousands of companies from the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. The study found that following an attack campaign, companies were less likely to share the results of their efforts. One example from the study was a company first included in the index in 2002 that proudly publicised its inclusion. But in early 2006, they were sued by an environmental group. The result? The company went silent for two years, even though it continued to be recognised by the index. The authors of the study call this the green hush. And when leaders of sustainability in the private sector go silent, what does that mean for the rest of the sector? Others who are looking for somebody to lead the way are cast adrift and much less likely or empowered to take action themselves. This means well-intentioned campaigns, public calls for boycotts, and media articles slamming their achievements as greenwash or misleading could actually be slowing down our decarbonisation efforts. Instead of sustainable practices being shared, everyone is stuck trying to figure it out on their own. Or worse, they do nothing. That's precisely the opposite of what needs to happen. We need even the least likely companies 
to be prioritizing a shift to more sustainable practices. To quote one of the authors of the study, when prominent companies like Walmart adopt such practices, that's when they really take off. In my line of work, I've heard firsthand the concerns of leaders in this space. They use words like fear and paralysis. They're terrified of being accused of greenwashing. These are the pitfalls of poking your head above the parapet. Once that word has been lobbed at you, it can be hard to shake. Whether the accusation is valid or not is irrelevant to how sticky it is and how much mistrust it sows. Let me give you a few examples of the accusation of greenwashing being directed at potential industry leaders that I've observed in the media. Take the footwear brand Allbirds. They're innovating sports shoe technology using plants and other biodegradable and renewable materials. They have an exceptional level of transparency, including the transparency of the carbon embedded into a single pair of their shoes. And their practices go further. Some of their shoe technology is open source so that their competitors can copy them. To me, this is powerful evidence that the big goal is more important to all birds than protecting valuable IP. Despite this, there was a class action lawsuit filed against Allbirds by a well-known activist group for misleading consumers with animal welfare and sustainability claims. Now this suit has since been dismissed, but when I think about Allbirds versus any other shoe company, I have no doubt that Allbirds is a leader of sustainability, and for that matter, prioritizing animal welfare. Similarly for IKEA, they report on the carbon emissions profile of the entire life cycle of their products. And they offer to buy products back off their customers at the end of their life cycle. Taking lifetime accountability for what you produce should be something every manufacturer of goods is required to do. But it's been called greenwashing because apparently it doesn't go far enough. Now, I call out these brands not because they're perfect. They've made mistakes too. But the term greenwashing has become so overused and misused. It's become a term of fear that's making business leaders cautious to act. The thing is, even with the best will in the world, companies face problems that can't be solved overnight. For example, there might be a critical part of an operation that can't yet be done sustainably. Or they may lack visibility or control over parts of their supply chain. Anyone who wants to catch these guys out can point at these issues and shout, gotcha. But does that mean they shouldn't address and communicate what they are doing to reduce their impact on the planet? To make matters worse, companies who carry on unapologetically with unsustainable or untransparent practices are largely left alone. They're held to a lower standard. Their practices are not interrogated. So guess what? They're under less pressure to adapt. Now, as climate change activists and commentators, we have no doubt got the right intentions. But setting the measurement bar at be perfect or you're a climate change criminal helps no one. As the chief executive of the New Zealand Climate Change Commission recently wrote, we cannot wait for the perfect plans, policies, tools or information. The time to start building for a thriving, low emissions and climate resilient future is now. What we need is to create an environment in which it is safe to innovate and to communicate what we're doing, because sharing it with the world further drives awareness, collaboration and progress much more broadly. And it also means that we're a better place to hit our emissions reduction goals. So I want to remind people that decarbonisation is hard. And anyone who is sitting on the sidelines 
commentating on it, needs to acknowledge that it's hard. This work is also urgent. So we need solutions that scale fast. So before shouting greenwashing, I'd urge us to ask whether we're actually directing our accusations and boycotts at the right targets. Or are we holding things back? At the same time, I'd urge those taking a lead on sustainability to be brave and to share the results of your efforts, even at the risk of facing criticism. In fact, I'd urge us to be upfront about those issues that remain unsolved, as well as amplifying the solutions that we do have. Because transparency is key to a good faith conversation about decarbonisation. Progress against our decarbonisation goal is more important than perfection. So let's work together, because the clock is ticking. Thank you.